No, you wrong. We'd like to know how we got here on the planet, and part of that is understanding about human diversity and what the different human groups are. And uh, so people study mitochondrial DNA, and they put us into groups of subspecies. Now, every every sexually reproducing species can uh, be divided, or not every, but probably almost all of them, can be divided into subspecies. There is a different type of carrots, and maybe they can interbreed, but they are isolated, and so they don't tend to interbreed. And these are called subspecies. And humans come in subspecies too, as you might expect. And so, but traditionally, these have been called races, and these races have been defined based on very superficial characteristics like, I don't know, color of your skin or how tall you are or how fat you are. And uh, so, but scientifically, I think we can find out who we are. For example, I did 23andMe. I spit into a test tube. And what they did was looked at very small sections of my DNA to see how they were different from this spit of other people in the world. And they don't g sequence the whole genome, but only those tiny places where they know there's variety. And then they say, oh, you are, you know, 53% Northern European, or you're 25% German, or you're 1% Icelandic or something, or and you have 2.3% Neanderthal genes. So when any human being on the planet spits into a test tube, they can put it into a giant computer, turn a crank, and then say, okay, here's you're more along this group, you're more along this group. Now, why that's important, I think, is because it can undermine the traditional cultural chauvinism and racism and all the terrible things that racism has done. Because if you look at humanity and try to divide it into five groups, let's say, I'm going to divide, you can divide like a bush. I mean, this is a tree of life. And here's a tree of life. And let's say that this is, I don't know, let's call it the tree of humanity. Instead of life, it's humanity. And you can say, well, how many branches are there? Well, if you cut it here, there are about seven, well, three branches, and then there are five branches, and then there are 20 branches. So you can cut any bush into as many branches as you want. So if you arbitrarily say, oh, let's make divide humans into five, then based on these characteristics, you will have five, four of them will be African races or subspecies, and then this fifth one will be a combination of African and the rest of the world. And so the, why, the reason why that's important is because typically people say in Europe, oh, there are these Africans, and then there's the Europeans, and then there are Chinese or something. And then they add, I don't know, Australian Aborigines or American Indians, they can put them some other place. But the whole point is that that traditional classification can be superseded by a scientific one. Now, I think you will point out that, oh, that scientific one isn't any better than the traditional one, or it's very, very dangerous. But I think the recognizing that we are all African, for example, if you go to a, Alabama and say to somebody, you know, you're an African, they will say, get the hell out of here, and, and they will be wrong. But if you could convince them and educate them that, yes, we are all Africans, all human beings are Africans, I think that will go some way towards undermining the racism that I think plagues the world. Jochen, respond. Well, so it might, it might, it might work if you try to well, mostly preach to the converted and try to explain to them that, you know, how we split races has actually, for us humanities, probably no value. But if you have racist tendencies and if I didn't you say want to... I race has no value. I said that you can do it scientifically and it has value. But, well, but I think that's a dangerous fallacy. If you create a more scientific way of well, splitting humans into different groups. And this is exactly what you're doing with this tree. You just uh, say that you can cut in a different way and you can split it in different ways. Um, not, not people that want to distinguish themselves as better humans will just simply use this scientific part of the tree. Look, look at that part of the tree where they okay. are and define whatever you cut it and however you cut it as the better part. Yeah. And all you might do is actually provide even more fuels for people to cut it in a way that make them look better. Right. They so you're say, saying that this group over here, these four African groups say, oh, the African group is, there's already enough tribalism in Africa that already is probably dependent on these differences between the African groups. Well, you can groups. become as crazy as you want to. You can say that very single genes that appear somewhere that you might have make yeah. me better. For example, you know, it's actually quite crazy. Everything has turned around and you'd think that would change racism forever. The idea that uh, out of Africa humans have a lot of Neanderthal, 2.5% or 4% Neanderthal genes, um, while Neanderthals were seen as those apes back then and that apparently Africans are more close to Neanderthals. Well, baloney. 
we white Europeans are more Neanderthals than anyone coming out of Africa, <laughs> living in Africa. Mm. So you'd think we should become a little bit more humble and saying, well, we thought Neanderthals are bad and primitive, and now we find out we have lots of Neanderthal genes. Mm. But you can turn the entire thing around when you know this and say, well, it was the noble fair-skinned, blue-eyed, red-haired Neanderthals that gave us these superior genes and these people in Africa don't have them. So whatever you come up scientifically, whatever you discover, someone else can turn it around and make themselves look better. So I think whatever argument you have, you can use it didactically to, to preach to the converted. Someone who wants to be racist, no science will ever stop them doing so. But, but Jochen, we biologists uh, divide species into subspecies all the time. Hmm. And if that's and it can be done, but to, to nuance it a little bit more, when I said that you could divide into these five, of course, if you take a person who's living today, they will be, you know, 20% this, 30% that, and, you know, 5% of this. They will be some mixture. And, of course, human beings interbreed all the time. And so the people that I've today don't fit into these categories very accurately, and these categories are not mutually exclusive. And that also needs to be pointed out. But there is some degree that they they are different, but they're also okay. not now, mutually exclusive. Here, and that's a subtlety comes, that's, was that too subtle here for Here comes what I believe is the danger. If you have scientific arguments on how racists split humanity, mm. they can simply use those scientific arguments, make their own arguments based on those scientific facts, and then your scientific arguments completely collapses and they feel even justified. So if you point out, well, the way you have split humanity is your racist, this is wrong because here's the scientific facts, the tree looks actually totally differently, haha, -ha, your racism is based on nonsense. Well, they simply go back using your new tree, split it up new and say, well, now we base it on science and now we can prove we are right. Of course, you can now see that how you value certain bits, certain parts and branches and tree of life has no objective scientific value. You can't I mean, no value a branch so. in the tree of life. Wait, wait, no, this you're is what you no, try to do. You're saying that it has no superior... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me back up a little. There's trees that are wait. more correct and less correct, but you can't use it to value to of say course, uh, one branch is better than right, the other. Right, if I, someone wants right, to I'm, value branches, I what agree, is the scientific I agree with argument that. against it? It's, there is no biological wait, wait, arguments against you it. Have no problem with, you have no problem. There's ethical and moral arguments against have, it, Charlie. Wait, okay, you have no problem with doing this to chimpanzees, do you? Doing what to chimpanzees? To looking at the subspecies of chimpanzees, the western chimpanzee versus the eastern chimpanzee, for example. Would you have any problem with that? No, biologically. Now, when you have somebody, no. uh, somebody who's studying this and has, oh, look at these two groups, ah, okay, we accept Charlie, that. Why don't you just that, accept a new doing version? Doing that with humans is also not false. It's what you make out of it. If you okay. want to, right, right, if, right. You, if you come up with ideas how you benefit right, right, personally right, from it right. by actually subduing other people, if you misuse this in this way, then it's wrong. So but you're saying it's going to be misused, therefore don't do it. So your, your opinion is, it's going, this is scientifically valid, but it's going to be misused, so don't do it. Is that your point? No, 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 that's what I'm not saying. Um, no, we, we scientists can't stop doing things like this because someone's going to misuse it. They misuse whatever is there. We can make it as accurate as possible. Um, it will be misused because it's a totally different sphere. What they're doing is not science. They don't need the science. They're, you know, a racist tries to elevate themselves over others, and you can do it whatever science is providing. So you think that it's okay for these guys who are doing mitochondrial trees and Y chromosome trees to do that and to recognize these groups and to create a bush? Absolutely, it's okay. So, as long but, uh, but I think doing that and making it widely known will undermine traditional racism. Well, so I think that's the fallacy. Um, it can be used for good, as for bad as most science. And it's because science doesn't say, in this sense, nothing about ethics and morale. Of course, behavioral ecology, evolution, behavioral ecology can say something say about the evolution of ethics and morale. There's a story here. But just the phylogeny of humans mm. and their genetic differences, that is value-free. Well, I'm, I'm not... There's no know. argument here whether we you should discriminate or we, not. We whatsoever. can argue about that later. But, but by the way, you know that we're not Africans, if you go back far enough, that because... Uh, primates are not in among in the group called Afrotheria. Afrotheria are the some group. point there was not even a continent called Africa, Charlie. I know, but the, w if you want to ex if you want to talk about anywhere from millions of years to two hundred million years, then you can talk about Africa. So, but there is a group of critters called Afrotheria who were on Africa and evolving there during its long separation from Gondwana, and primates were not one of that group. 
And so when we say all humans are Africans, that's restricted to a certain time frame from about 200,000 years ago to about 50, 60, 70 million years ago. And before that, we were probably Laurasia Thayers. As you've pointed out earlier, the definition of most, especially biological terms, is only valid for the present. Mm. All of these words change their meaning if you go back in time, even the word African. Okay, well, maybe we just agree too much.